Hi guys, uh, thanks very much for tuning in. I'm Sumera Abdi and you're watching our special Made for YouTube series where we break down the concepts uh, from the mutual fund industry for easy understanding of you, our retail uh, investors. So today we are going to cover a very interesting topic. I'm sure most of you have heard about it or heard the term, uh, you know, roll down strategy with respect to debt mutual funds. So today we are going to understand exactly what is this strategy? How does it work? Is it beneficial? If so, how? And how do you, you know, uh, blend in uh, the funds that follow a roll down strategy into your portfolio? So let me invite the expert Devang Shah, who's the deputy head of fixed income at Axis AMC. Hi, Devang. Thanks very much for indulging us yet again. And, you know, because debt mutual funds are a little more confusing than equity sometimes. So we need experts like you to help us break it down. So thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. And I hope everyone is doing fine. Yes, I hope so, too. OK, uh, so first, since we're talking about roll down strategy, I don't want to give my explanation because, uh, you know, I want to learn with the subject today myself. Right. So first up, can we understand what do you exactly mean when you say a fund follows a roll down strategy? What is it? Sure. So I think, uh, see, what happens is for fixed income and specifically fund managers at particular point of time find different strategies to be adopted and applied onto the funds. Uh, we have constant maturities, we have barbell strategies, we have belly strategies, we have roll down. So roll down is also one of the strategy which the fund manager believes makes a lot of sense from investment perspective. It's a good idea at certain point of times and hence he applies that strategy onto the fund. In simple terms, if I explain you what does roll down means, roll down means that uh, uh, when I'm looking at the entire uh, different points onto the fixed income curve, which is one year to 10 year, one year to 30 year, at times we find certain maturities very, very uh, as an attractive investment option. So what does the fund manager do at that point of time? He says that I will roll down the entire portfolio. He selects that specific bucket or maturity and he invests all the uh, assets and entire portfolio into that specific maturity. Example, today if I'm in 2021 and if I'm like, I'm plotting the entire curve, I, if a particular fund manager likes a 2026 segment and he believes that 2026 segment has an attractive value, both from perspective onto the spread as well as onto the curve, then he would build the entire portfolio into 2026 and incremental any kind of flows which comes into the scheme they will all be invested in similar like 2026 maturities and they will be hold to maturity papers. They will, they will not be, you will not be seeing a lot of churn and a lot of trading into them. So it's a hold to maturity kind of an, uh, a strategy, which we, which at times fund managers believe are the best option for that period of investment horizon. And they would be very, very attractive for investors from a return perspective also. So that is how a roll down works. In simplified terms, if today I'm I'm looking at a 2026 roll down, today the fund will offer you a five-year kind of a maturity. In 2022, the maturity will fall down to four years. In 2025, the maturity of the fund will fall down to one year. So that is how it works. Okay. So if I get it right, the maturity remains fixed from the time of investment uh, by the fund manager right and it is a chosen maturity it could be one year two year five year whatever depending on what is the perspective of the fund manager at that time uh therefore what is the criteria for selection i mean since you said that suppose the fund manager says he likes the 2026 bonds right, right. will the criteria for selection be quality or will it simply be maturity i mean what is the cutoff in terms of quality Sure. So see, uh, just to uh, clarify that, you are perfectly right that the year of maturity will remain similar throughout the investment horizon, but the maturity of the fund will keep on reducing. So the roll down yes. work across is that when you start with a five year example, it will roll down after a year to four and then to one year and then mm -hmm. to zero. Uh, on on to perspective, I think the choice of maturity is depending on the market environment. So I, I'm sure if you look across at various point of time, there are those 
uh, uh, points on the curve which look very very attractive and get sold off or there is huge amount of volatility due to some demand supply dynamics or certain uh, uh, elements on liquidity or rate cycle has changed so the points or the majority keep on changing depending on the interest rate view and the i would say the outcome of that over a over a time horizon uh, what we have seen over a period of time is these roll down strategies suits well with conservative investors and investors who are actually looking at not much volatility in returns or looking at more predictability in returns and hence we have looked across that generally these funds tend to have these roll down strategies tend to have a high quality bias so our mm -hmm. our view is maturity is more a market determining factor and uh, because these are kind of conservative strategies uh, they generally have a high quality bias uh, at all point of time so most of these funds will be 80 90 100% aaa uh, strategies okay so once the maturity is fixed like the example we're talking about say the uh, 2026 uh, maturity is fixed right uh, in the life of that fund till 2026 it doesn't change right it will you will hold it to maturity till 2026 even if the external environment were to change right so see from a uh, how does a fund manager works a fund manager wants to apply a strategy as i explained you there are so many kind of strategies on the fixed income side if i like constant maturity i would want to run that constant maturity because we we believe that the constant maturity will be the best investment option similarly if a fund manager or a fund house decides that roll down of a specific maturity makes the best investment horizon i think till the period gets over so suppose if we have chosen a 2026 i think the fund manager would not change the strategy regulatorily can they change answer is yes but practically i think because the fund manager has believed in the strategy and the idea they would not be changing those uh, strategies uh, uh, in the interim period so they will constantly uh, continue with the roll down till the end of the uh, maturity in example in our case it would be 2026 as the example which we cited okay so what about the interest which these bonds earn uh, how does that get used up in the fund so any kind of inflows any kind of in so interest uh, coupons are like corporate actions and uh, somewhere down the line any kind of inflow movements any kind of corporate actions are exactly uh, replicated to you will buy similar 2026 maturity assets in our example so whatever is the roll down maturity example it can be 3 year 5 year 30 year 10 year whatever looks good to the fund manager on to the on to the curve uh, any uh, once and he has decided that this fund will be rolled down to that maturity uh, uh, any incremental flows including corporate actions will be bought into similar maturity papers okay uh, you know late last year we saw a lot of fund houses uh, introducing this roll down strategy into open ended funds which wasn't the case earlier therefore i'm tempted to ask if there is a certain environment which is more suitable or conducive to having a roll down strategy okay so i would say it's not only last year now uh, fund houses have been running uh, some fund houses have been running roll down strategies for almost 3 4 years i uh, see uh, uh, if you look at the market environment as well as growth and inflation as well as the curve the uh, last 2 3 years uh, post the nbfc crisis and again uh, due to the pandemic we had got opportunities where the triple a uh, curve on 2 3 to 5 year segment was available at 8 plus i'm i'm sure if you remember 2018 yes uh, or oh, september october the 3 year corporate bonds were at or 4 year corporate bonds were at 8 quarter 8 half levels even uh, march as as uh, early as march 2020 last year just after the pandemic and we had the shock and volatility in markets a three year corporate bond were ab available at 8% plus so i think it is more from a perspective on the point of the curve where we believed or the industry would believe that liquidity is going to be strong growth is going to be weak then 8% plus is a very very good return and hence roll down strategies would have initiated at that point of time from a three year perspective because i think that was the best outcome or the best solution which fund managers could provide to investors secondly uh, what is also need to be noted is when does these roll down strategies work i think 
a common sense basic common sense when you go and lock in fd rates it is at the peak of the interest rate where you believe that fd is are offering a far much higher return it is better to lock in rates at that point of time i think uh, 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 roll down strategies are, are examples of oh, similar to fmps or fixed deposits where if the interest rate cycle is at peak i think it makes lot of sense to capture through roll down strategies because what you are doing is you are it, it is a kind of an a hold to maturity product you are capturing an yield it gives you more predictability so such structures in an in, in an interest rate environment which is one rising or where you believe that interest rates are peak i think makes a lot of sense to investors bottom of the interest rate cycle i think active strategies or uh, active funds makes more much more sense than passive strategies okay so once again decisions are driven by you know where interest rates are headed but you phrased an important point devang that in many ways uh, the roll down strategy is similar to an fmp which is a fixed maturity uh, plan which you know a lot of our viewers would be familiar with already uh, therefore you know because the roll down strategy is employed in an open ended fund could it replace fmps which are closed ended so i would say see uh, there can be an option uh, as as against fmps but i would say that probably see at all point of time we have limited uh, open ended funds okay people would not want their strategies to be because uh, finally what happens is a roll down strategy as as you highlighted it becomes a hold to maturity product now it is difficult for a fund house to keep on converting a lot of their schemes into roll down strategy so i would say and we have a limited basket uh or uh, after all the categorization done by sebi we have limited basket of open ended funds so i think is it a complete uh, uh, substitute whereby people will shift completely from uh, fmps to roll downs my view is no both will have its own place but yes this this is a good option as uh, and it is quite similar to fmps it has a it has a better uh, uh, i would say one more positive as compared to fmp that it has high, much higher liquidity because in fmp is once you are locked in you cannot uh, if there is some emergency and you need your funds you cannot redeem it is difficult in an open ended fund in a roll down structure you have that liquidity available so i think it is fmp plus uh, uh, the liquidity availability so yes uh, roll downs are a good solution but it would not completely take over fmps because we don't have so many open ended funds mm. they want sometimes in fmps even on maturity we're not able to take out the money <laughs> but anyway um, you know what happens say if uh, you have chosen the 2026 once again our example and in the you know sometime in the first year or second year you know somewhere in the life of that fund you get sudden large inflows right are there always bonds available with the same maturity which the fund manager can buy or I mean, I'm just trying to understand what happens when you get a sudden inflow of cash, right? How does it get utilized? Is there always a market which you can access for these 2026 bonds or whatever is the majority of the plan? Okay, see, uh, if you ask me, uh, generally, what uh, what points on the curve which a fund manager or a fund house would look across? Uh, these are all very liquid points. So one year, three year, five year, ten year, all these are general uh, concepts which people would look across on roll downs. uh these are genuinely you got to get a lot of supply and even if there is a roll down so like 3 4 5 year segment suppose if you start at 2026 next year it will become a four year bond there are lot of issuance on four year bonds and uh, two years after hence it will become a three year bond you get a lot of issuances on three years so three year five year segment typically i don't see any challenges for anything significantly longer we can have those kind of some bit of i would say uh 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 the gaps in finding those maturities bad times but i would say markets now have become very very liquid so anything up to 10 year roll downs we don't see significant concerns and we see a lot of issuances and lot of corporate bond supply to to keep up with the large inflows and whenever such large inflows come the fund manager would generally replicate the maturity and keep it intact with that and uh, i don't believe that there will be any kind of uh, significant impact even if there is a half a year plus minus on a uh, maturities okay so influences have been good corporate bond issuances have developed we get uh, up to from 1 to 10 year we get lot of issuances across maturity so road we don't see any kind of concerns okay uh 
would you say that uh, because the maturity is fixed uh, and like an FMP, which we have compared it to earlier, are returns more predictable, therefore, for investors? And the other thing is that where does it fit into a person's portfolio? I mean, do I find a goal and align it uh, to the life of this fund? Because, you know, on maturity, like say in 2026, when the bonds mature, you will again reinvest it uh, for the next three years or five years, whatever your call is uh, as a fund manager at that time. So how does a person align their goals to such a fund? I mean, what is the place? See, I would say it is the goal is exactly similar to an FMP investor. So if I if I am looking at locking yields for the next three to five years, okay, then these roll off strategies are a good option. Uh, what from from a fund manager perspective, I think it is exactly it is running like a strategy. So as I told you, at times what we do is we believe that a constant maturity fund makes a lot of sense. At times we believe that a barbell strategy it makes a lot of sense. Where you invest a large portion in short term papers and some portion in long bonds. At times, we believe roll down makes a lot of sense. So it is a strategy which the fund manager is choosing. From a goal perspective, I think because uh, the, after all the tax uh, related uh, uh, guidance and everything, I think from a perspective of investment horizon, it should be at least three years. So three years is what we advise is the minimum holding period for any debt product. Even roll down falls into the same category. Now, uh, once the life is over, I think it becomes an active fund. And again, the fund manager, depending on his outlook, then whatever is his interest rate view, what points on the curve he believes makes value and uh, for the investors as well as for the fund, that is what will be the selection. So I, from a personal perspective, if you ask me investment horizon, for all debt products, it should be minimum three years. For roll downs, it should be broadly similar to the majority of the fund. So if it's a five-year roll down, your investment horizon should be five years. That is where you will make a value and a good return proposition. Uh, as an investor, suppose I have invested in a five-year roll down. Right. Is the wiser choice for me to then redeem at the end of those five years and then reinvest it again in, uh, uh, you know, in that active fund or some other fund or wait for that fund to decide whether they're going to uh, take on a new roll down maturity or should we just say invest it till we need the money? I think in fixed income funds, if it's a two-year, three-year kind of product, so we always uh, do that kind of analysis. So uh, we believe that generally short-term kind of categories, which is into this two-year, three-year buckets, are at all seasons fixed income products. Okay, It is just like if you have a certain allocation in debt. Example, if I'm earn, uh, earning 100, my savings is 50. If uh, out of that 50 rupees or 40 rupees of savings, I, I allocate 10% depending on my age group. If I'm allocating 10 to 15% to debt, uh, our belief is that that 10, 15% should always remain in short term category. So I think post the maturity also, if the fund is not significantly changing the mandate and not going significantly long on duration, investors can, uh, can, investors can continue to be stay invested in such roll down strategies because two year, three year investment horizon and corporate bonds are the best uh, I would say all time investment options for debt investors. So, uh, as you rightly said, the first thing is you have to match your investment horizon till the roll down. So minimum investment horizon should be the roll down of the fund to, as, uh, to get the entire return perspective as well as value proposition as the fund manager has uh, thought about it. Secondly, post that also, post the period is over. I think the fund manager can continue, sorry, the investor can continue to stay invested if if the fund is running around two to three year uh, corporate bond strategies, because these are all time solutions to debt investors. Got it. Devan, thanks very much for your time today. And thanks for explaining this concept to us. So just to summarize, uh, you know, everything that Devan has said, a roll down strategy is basically a fund which will follow a certain, uh, you know, invest in bonds of a certain lifespan, whatever the call may be, one year, two year, three year, like they once said, there's really, uh, you know, maturity, you can think of 10 years, 30 years, whatever is the call at that point in time. And they hold these bonds uh, to maturity. So investors can consider aligning it in their portfolio as such, depending on what is the maturity that they have chosen. So I hope, viewers, you found all of this uh, useful. If you have any further queries and suggestions, 
uh, we would be very, very happy to take them up and answer them subsequently. You can put out all your comments in the comment section below. And also, if there are some more topics that you would like us to cover in the days to come, do feel free to send us those suggestions as well. So with that, we're going to wind up for today. Stay safe, stay home, and don't go out unless you really need to. Devang, thanks once again very, very much uh, for indulging us today. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and stay safe.